You can probably do the hang test on this, I'm gonna assume. Sure. Check this out for me. But so you can see who's at the entry door instead of getting up and checking it. So cool, you've got a golf cart inside the building here. So not, not a lot of inventory going on here, man. What's uh, what's going on over here at Premier lately? Well, you know, we're selling motorhomes. And, uh, you know, it's like a Snap-on guy told me one time, it's not a museum when I asked him why the tool wasn't there anymore. And that's the way motorhome sales are too. It's not a museum except for one piece, the one right behind me. Concept, that is a museum piece. That is the only exception. piece. Yeah. The only exception. Well, what is for sale here? Uh, I think we got this 2009 executive. 09 executive. Now, are all of your coaches here consignment rigs? No, I would say I'm going to guess 25 to 30 percent are consignment. We're actually always looking for more. We've got behind us one, two, three, four, five spots that we can always put something. So we're always looking for good quality, high line um, coaches to put on consignment. You know, this is a great specimen. This 2009, one of the last great Monaco executives made with a 650 horse Cummins in it. Nice. Um, one thing that's nice about these is that they didn't have the multiplex chassis system in them. So from an RV technician standpoint, this is a little more solid piece of iron compared to the signature in the dynasty that was built the same year. It has just the elementary chassis like we've always done for wiring and didn't have some crazy multiplex system in it. And this is listed for sale for $199,000 and it has 56,619 miles on it. Great looking coach, man. There is a little bit of checking in the black. I try to be fully transparent here. Want to want to disclose that to you guys here other than that i mean the coach is in great shape and i only see checking on the black the rest of the coach is in good shape and i like the lights around the windows as well uh power awnings above the windows and these bays are definitely uh super solid you can feel that's a what's the deal with the build quality on the bays do you know I think it's excellent. I have the personal opinion that if it wasn't made in Lane County or in Oregon, that it's really not worth owning because we had a different philosophy on the way we built coaches out here and the way they were engineered. Uh, like I was talking to you the other night during dinner is that I think a lot of the electrical stuff was inspired by like Boeing and aviation. The engineers would actually go up to Seattle and take tours of Boeing and whatnot. Now, is that over at Monaco or Monaco Country Coach? Monaco and Country Coach. I mean, really? you know, they were both highly inspired by what was local and what they, you know, it's a much cheaper flight to go up to Seattle for somebody out of Lane County here than it is from somebody from Indiana or someone that figures out they already have it. I know for sure that Country Coach was doing that. I'm pretty sure Monaco did. They were leading technology and electrical side of it too, you know. It's a, it's, it's a little different, you know, A and B products. But, you know, like this coach here, good solid construction aluminum welded doors you can probably do the hang test on this i'm gonna assume wow dude i mean dude can you do I that love, again so the, that i can I get love it. the miller family and i love their product but I'm gonna hold on dude you'll be I know, pretty <laughs> hard on this Let's door this out for me. wow you did that three times right now i'm yeah. a witness in in several different camera angles i don't know any other motorhome the thing of it is is it goes back to monaco and country coach both built the chassis for the motorhome so the guy sat across the way from the guy that did the engineering for the motorhome side of it and said hey i need these holes here or this here in the chassis and it was all engineered and just stout rigid stuff i mean the only reason why you ever see this checking really is because they we thought it was great to paint coaches black yeah in dark dark covers colors. yeah and it's only you, never see it in a white. you can see and so this is paint checking and i need to make a video all about paint checking to just explain it a little more that's actually probably a good video that we should film while we're here actually uh but it's the camera barely shows it this is something there's these little tiny kind of check marks basically but you'll want to check for this and if the coach is really dirty you won't even be able to see it but there's basically these little cracks in the clear coat now you don't see it at all on the lighter colors 
even the maroon, no checking on the maroon, and there's actually no checking in the black either, for whatever reason up there, it just didn't didn't right. check. And so that gets back to fiberglass fiberglass science. I mean, if you have a Corvette and you left it in the sun all the time, it's gonna check. It's the nature of fiberglass. It has to do with heat and expansion and contraction. And of course, we all know that if you paint something black, they make a solar panel black so it gets hot. Well, you don't make them white. And anywhere where you got light colors, you're gonna see that. You can watch it vary from color to color on coaches that have sat down in Indio, Phoenix, the South, just getting hammered. You'll see right here on the skirt, exact same color. There's no checking. And that's because the thicknesses of the gel coat vary. The chemicals, the amount of hardeners put in the gel coat, there's so many variables, you know? I mean, the sidewalls were made by Dow or by um, Mills or Miles up in Portland. These were made in house. So totally different gel coat, totally different amounts of hardeners, totally different things. And that's why you end up with checking sometimes you'll even have yeah, no a... checking there but checking on this fiberglass that's a lot of education and i'll tell you what we're gonna this is gonna be such a i want to i want to keep focusing on this monaco coach but this is such an interesting topic when we're done filming this let's film a whole video all about paint checking and then i'll make sure to leave a link in the description below what else is going on with this coach sorry to cut you off no, there no, but no, yeah, I'm yeah. totally with you I'm totally with you <laughs> yeah. because we can we need to show different products how it happens. Nobody's um, superior oh. enough to not have that happen. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, and and I've even seen that on uh, Prevo H3s as well, on some of the older Prevo H3s. You got it. Oh yeah, no, I and, and the kind of, and the XL2s on the top. I've seen it on other on Prevos as well. So um, let me just open and close. You mind opening and closing that basement door? Just to just the to. to and no matter what, if the coach is level or if it's in travel mode, that door's still going to close the same. Some manufacturers chassis twist and so on and so forth, and the doors all align great when it's level. But then when it's in travel mode and you're kind of crooked, the doors don't close the same. In my personal opinion, I um, try to be an expert, but these doors will always line up no matter how the coach is sitting, if it's level or not level and whatnot. Yeah, and another cool thing about the executives that I like is the styling cues is that they brought the skirts down a little more. So you pull in, you park on a nice level pad, you dump the air out of it, you get that nice low rider effect, looking all cool. Put some undercoach lighting in there, make it all pop. Yeah, and the other thing I really like about it is the higher roof rails. Now, it's gonna have the full awnings on the other side but this side has that higher roof rail to give it a higher appear, a higher profile and a better appearance. And the way that they flow with the rear cap and the front cap really go well together. So this is a Monaco Executive. Now, is this the same as that other Monaco Executive with the Detroit Series 60 that we filmed? Uh, is that an Executive as well? Yes, that would be Executive, a little different. So that's an 04, yep. and then this is a 2009. Definitely make sure to check out the video we did on the 2004. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description uh, below. This is an 09 executive. Uh, what's going on on the basement bays over on this side? Very first one's gonna be your fuel tank. Your next one's gonna be a pass-through bay with a slide tray in it. Looks like he's got some board or something here, but it, uh, these are the electric ones, so you've got the switch here on the side. There's a lot of lights in this room, so I don't know how well you can see it, but there's lights around the windows, and when it's nighttime and those are illuminated, it definitely looks nice. The paint, the stripes, continue on the sides of the slide-out as well. Got a nice electric uh, Gerard window awnings too. Kind of cool to have that on this toilet room. Probably is. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen the floor plan inside yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing inside of this coach. We're gonna be in there in just a minute. What kind of uh? This is the 650 Cummins. This is the top of the food chain here. Do you know what kind of fuel mileage these 650 Cummins get from your experience? Um, usually about five and a half, six, maybe seven miles to the gallon. 
usually it's right about six that's what the computer automated system calculates that you're coming up with when you look on like a country coach with the silver leaf and it tells you miles to the gallon as you're pedaling along it's usually about six six and a quarter so man that is a huge engine coming 650 and this is a non-def coach yeah that'd be correct non-def it just has the particular this also has the full Gerard awnings on this side. So not only is it in the front of the coach, but it's all the way along this whole side of the coach here. This Monaco has a pretty wide entry door as well. The leather's in really good condition. This whole cockpit area is really in good condition. Got a drawer here with your awning controls. I like the two toned leather on the steering wheel. Large, wide seats. The condition though, this stuff's holding up good. I really like this floor plan with the front kitchen here. So if you're gonna come in and get a drink or go in and out of the coach, you don't have to go all the way uh, to the back of the coach. You can just get your refrigerators right here on the passenger side of the coach. Galley area over here to the right. This is a cool uh, backsplash here. Pretty modern contemporary design here. What's going on in here, Brian? Well, you know, it's a, like you said, it was a pretty cool floor plan with the TV there. And then this, it's got this little extension here. You like the bottles of wine and whatnot. It's got the wine cooler there. Maybe down here in this drawer, you keep your bottles of Crown and you can lock it up from your friends. Keep the, <laughs> keep the Costco stuff available for your buddies and hide the Crown. Oh. Yeah, a little glassware cabinet. I like the way, though, it's kind of a tinted cover here. I like that bat -lack backsplash, like you were saying. It'd be cool if you got in there and did a little mods and get some lighting in there, maybe. And oh, yeah, that would be really that cool. Was that something you would be able to do here? Yeah, we'd be able to do that here with the LED lights. We like to get crazy with the LEDs and do the undercoach. And when we do the window box uh, lighting and stuff, we take that stuff out and put the new modern LEDs in there and throw resistors in to dim them down and stuff. It's a really cool ceiling. I was just thinking the same thing. Look it. at that pattern. It's uh, It's got just a couple mirrors, but they're subtle and the ambient lighting underneath. I like the midship TV as well with this really long couch over here with the dining table over here where you can look at the TV and then that nice office area. Really a neat floor plan. I've... uh. I've never seen a coach like this with this floor plan before. You know, it's like we were talking about on that other executive. Monaco really spent a lot of time creating floor plans. And they always came up with some pretty cool stuff. And this is a cool one here, too. It's even got the sweep vent here for the vacuum for the wheel to sweep everything off into and not have to get a hose out or myself. Cool desk here, you know, you could put a modern TV in here, run your HDMI from your laptop. You could actually, this would be a great coach for you because you could edit and actually yeah. do everything on a bigger screen. That right would be really home. cool to have kind of an office set up. You're, I don't know, Brian's giving me ideas here. This is 200,000. It's about the same vintage as my coach, uh, but it's definitely a lot nicer. Brand new carpet there. It looks like it's in great shape. I don't know if it's brand new, but it's definitely in great shape. Here at Premier RV of Oregon, they always wrap the carpet in plastic. I like these floors here with the pattern there within the tiles. Oh wow, this is really nice. Yeah, this is kind of cool. You got it so at night if you want to have a little light in the bathroom, leave on all the time. Accent in the mirror. Oh, those are cool. Real modern looking. Really good size shower there. I like it. It's good looking. You know, the backsplash tile in it look good. The Solid yeah, let me see there. if I don't think the, the camera's gonna pick up, but yeah, just a beautiful uh, two different patterns, but they really accent each other well with the tile. And then what's that surface on the back of the uh, shower there? So that'd be a matching uh, solid surface similar to Corian that they've used here on the countertops, also. I like that sink too, really good looking sink. Yeah, it needs to be backlit. 
and then it'd be shining through there. That'd be a really cool. Oh, yeah, I think it is back. It is backlit the way oh, all yeah. the other yeah, lights really on. Light. Yeah. yeah, maybe with the oh yeah, yeah that turns on and off with that accent. Here, light. turn the other light off. There it is. That's a good looking setup. Throw some new modern color changing LEDs in there. You pick the color for the season. Yeah. I like the glass inserts on all the doors. Just kind of breaks up that wood raised panel insert. King size bed here. And I really like that same, the, the decor work on the ceiling. Really high end with the fan in the bedroom as well. And... You've got a ton of storage space off here to the left and really nice woodwork. Rear closet back here, completely lined with carpet. I wonder if there's, do you think there's a safe back here? I'm sure you got a safe. Somewhere. Mounted on the got side a large, floor. large washer and dryer here. Yep. So same as that 04, we're just throwing a cover over it. Oh, nice. Mounted safe mounted floor. on the floor. And then just a little bit of storage space. Now, this is going to be uh, the Intellitech uh, lighting components where you're going to find all your fuses for your lights. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what's what got stashed in All there. the fuses. Yeah, the multiplex. That's the a house. huge yeah. closet, like, totally finished out like you would see in a high-end home. Yeah, I like the little pocket back here. It gives you that extra storage. We missed that market country coach. Yeah, yeah no, that's cool to have that a larger, out. not just shoe cubbies, a lot of them will be just shoe cubbies, but that larger pocket there behind the uh, wardrobe there. Looks like a couple, uh, like a, a couple extra chairs or something there. Or... Yeah, yeah looking sure like the also. old canvas movie star chairs. Okay. Fold, fold it up there, that's probably kind of nice. You have guests over. What's so the screen nice. over here? This is awesome. I, yeah, I thought I'd fire that what? up. What? So that, you now know, that's big league. When you're concerned about what the neighbors may be doing around you, you can actually go through this camera selector and select the different cameras. If we went up to the front, we could get rid of that caution part of it and clear that off of there. But So it gives you an idea, though, of what we got going here. So you can see who's at the entry door instead of getting up and checking it. And then next to the bed here, we got the control for the fan, too. So that way you can turn it up and down. Nice. Yeah, and then the other Intellitech start and stops and stuff like that, and ceiling lights. Nice. That's balling. Super nice cabinetry. I really like that kind of frosted glass look. And then it's carpeted on the inside. Are those blinds um, day night? So you got. Yeah. But they're not automatic. You do no. those manually. Yeah, you do those nice. manually. Yeah. yeah. Really beautiful look here. I think uh, just a little bit of bedding. Oh, oh, that's super cool. Nice. So you really get the full blackout. Some people, you know, it's got to be black. You could definitely use a new bedspread. The bedspread might be a little bit. I mean, it's not too bad. I've seen much worse, but I think it's so nice that a new bedspread would definitely spruce things up in here. And look at how high end that mattress is. Like it's bright white, super clean. Nice looking coach. I'm sure you covered that, but that's nice to have the separate washer and dryer. Yeah, and it's in a great location where it's right between your closet and then all of your drawers. Yeah, separate washer and dryer, so it's not an all-in-one unit. And it's a big uh, 220 um, dryer also, so it's going to have actually a drying time similar to your house. You have to be on 50 amp or have to have uh, your gen running to be able to get that dryer working, but it'll really get stuff dry at a good pace. Do we look in the little head area here? I don't know if we did. Yeah, it's got the window there with a fantastic fan. Yeah, second sink over here. Let me get these lights on. That same backsplash. Oh, and those. it also has those same accent lights as well. Nice. Is it in the sink too? No, no sink. Only that sink has the special lights in it, but still has these special lights though. Probably 
probably got the air mattress here, I'm going to assume, so you could have some guests over. No, just oh, okay, a just a, a scissor. Small scissor. Nice. Still have somebody over. Oh, good deal. I like this chair. I'm going to... I'm gonna test this chair out here. All right, guys, Brian's trying to sell me on another coach here. He's trying to get me all excited. Um, 200 grand, probably a little bit out of my budget. Um, definitely a lot of coach, so I can see, I can see why. Uh, heated tile floors. Yourself cozy. The nice thing about heated tile floors too is if you're not having too much of a temperature swing, you can just kick those things on and they'll keep the coach warm out throughout the day and then the evening. You don't have to listen to any diesel burners or any roof heat pumps. Kind of cool. Does this have the semi monocoque construction like the country coaches do? Yes, it would have the Roadmaster semi monocoque construction with the uh, four bags on the front and then four bags on the rear and two more, I think, on the tag. I can't remember exactly on that. But yeah, no, these are really great driving coaches. Really solid, feels the road, good feedback, you know. Uh, Great coach to another one of those cases where we've lost a great piece of history because sure you could buy some sort of called Monaco product, but it's not going to be like it was back in the day. So, you know, this goes back to buying coaches at small percentages compared to brand new coaches and really getting rock solid units. Um, you know, Monaco is a great product, I feel personally. I worked at another dealer for three different years after building country coaches and learned about all the different brands and manufacturers there are. And I've always been really proud to say that a Monaco being built here was really good. Well, I'm definitely really impressed with the build quality. You can definitely tell it's a really high build quality. And this is a clean coach, no smells, no musky smells at all. You smell anything, bud? Smell does pass. It's got power blinds as well. Yeah, up here in the living area, it looks like you've got power blinds for here and uh, one over there on that other side. Oh, so I just press this button right here. Or blind up, just press and hold up. Okay. Nice. Boom. So I hold it down. Yeah, yeah, press and hold. This is much easier than having to push up the blinds myself. I hold it down, yeah. I don't know, Brian, what, uh, if somebody's a serious buyer, who should they get a hold of? Well, the front office at Premier RV Sales of Oregon or go to their website and take a look at it and drop them an email or come on in and take a look at it and see what else we have in stock. You know, it's always great to see more coaches than uh, just a couple when you're out there looking for them and always leave that great quality Highline used product as an option instead of being stuck with the brand new stuff. I absolutely agree, and Premier can also do a lot of uh, aftermarket work. Like if you wanted to make some improvements too, they can do a lot of that here. So it's really a one-stop shop. So, hey, I greatly appreciate the folks at Premier RV Services for letting us take a look at this. Greatly appreciate Brian. Hopefully his YouTube channel drops soon. When should they be able to see your YouTube channel? I would say in the next five days, I'll have that all up and going in a place for you to be able to go to and actually see a couple videos. The camera's in now and whatnot, and I'm going to go down and pick up some editing equipment and get it dialed in. Really appreciate all of you liking these videos and subscribing to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day. Thanks again.